Another service that we offer here is programming. This video is not a how-to on how to program a vehicle, but it's to give you some information. So if you take your car to a shop and they say your vehicle needs to be programmed or after we replace this part, we have to do a flash or there's other terms they use, at least you'll have an idea of what is going on and what it takes for them to do it. So we're gonna use this as an example. This is a 2000, 2007 uh, Saturn Outlook and the transmission control module had to be replaced. This is inside the transmission behind the side cover. Um, it's also called the Tecum. Right? It has all the solenoids. What happened with this one is the pressure sensors right here went bad. So it has a built-in computer. Once this goes in, it has to be programmed. Unfortunately, programming a vehicle is not as simple as just downloading an app. I'll just briefly run through what a shop needs, what they have to pay for, and the equipment that is required in order to do this. Um, most cars, well almost all cars, require some type of programming uh, when a module is replaced. And it's not just something like a transmission control module or a engine control module. There's many modules on cars now. There's door modules, there's lift gate modules, there's airbag modules. I put a, a master door switch in a, um, a GM vehicle and I had to program that in order for the power seats to work and, and other things. So. It, it's common, it's very common. And what a shop needs, first of all, is they have to purchase a subscription from the manufacturer, whether it's GM, Ford, Chrysler, Volvo, whoever. That information is not free to them. They have to pay for it, and it may be as low as $55 for just a couple of days access on up to whatever the manufacturer wants to charge. So once they have that subscription, uh, then we have the laptop, usually a dedicated laptop for programming and they have to install software from the manufacturer. The software then downloads their information that's needed to go into the car. From there, it goes through a device, either a pass-through device, this is a card app from Drew Technologies, or an OE tool, a manufacturer scan tool, or for instance, like the Tech2, or Toyota's TechStream, or whatever it is. So that's a, those can be very expensive tools there. So, the laptop sends the information through the pass-through device, then it goes into the vehicle, and from there, the module can be programmed. So not everything always goes smoothly. They also need, like I hooked up to this vehicle right now, is a battery charger that's considered a low ripple charger. You can't have fluctuations in electricity while you're trying to download software into a vehicle, and you don't want the battery to go low when that happens either, or you can run into a lot of problems. So you have that as well that's gonna be needed to do it properly. So all this is a lot of expense for a shop um, to be able to do that. And it also takes, um, of course, training and knowledge to be able to do it because it doesn't always go very smoothly. And manufacturer to manufacturer, there's different things that need to be done. And if it's not done correctly, you can ruin a module. And that gets very expensive. So hopefully this helps if you take your vehicle in and. They say, hey, after we do this repair, this needs to be flashed or programmed. They hand you a piece of paper and say, this is how much it's gonna cost. At least you know what it takes for them to do it, what goes into it. And if you have any other questions, just ask. Um, I didn't wanna to be too specific with this video, but at least here's some information for you. Thanks.